And today I want to talk about the car which came to me by luck. Uh, usually I'm not kind of buying those kind of cars because again, it's kind of expensive. It has a lot of miles. And when I'm going through the cars, which is on a list for sale for next day at the auctions, I'm usually putting those cars on the workbook. When I see this one, GLS 63 IMG, I'm like, okay, that's on the workbook, but it's a red color. I'm probably not gonna get it. Why I need it? Because it's red. I mean, nobody gonna buy it. Okay, again, I overslept with that idea. And next morning, I check my workbook again. I do, do see a lot of different cars which I wanna buy and I bought them. And I was thinking about, should I buy it or not? But when I start seeing the prices, it's not going up so high. I was expecting it's gonna be more than 50,000 but it was a little bit cheaper. So I'm not going to tell you how much exactly I pay for the car. Uh, if you can find it, you can find it. If not, it's okay. But again, it's kind of a tricky car because 100,000 miles on the Mercedes, which is the GLS IMG 63, it's kind of high and you might going to face a lot of problems which you're not going to fix it because the parts for this car is so much expensive. It's not the Honda, it's not the Iota, it's, under, it's not under warranty anymore. You have to pay it from your pocket. So I was bidding a little bit. It's about five hours that action going on and on and on. Some other people trying to beat me over, but I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to get it for sure. Because first of all, it's a IMG 63. Second one, it's a red color. That's super rare. I was checking all the platforms everywhere. None of them for sale right now in that color. Because this one, it was a special order. It has design a color, whatever it is called, but it's a I believe, I believe around 1100 bucks you have to pay over the price over the sticker the sticker for this car was 135 and some change that's the msrp plus the color plus some options you want to pay so that's what you're going to get so it's not the usual color you can see at the auction plus it's amg but i decided i'm going to buy it so i was bidding on it for several hours and i won this car so this car was in arizona it came to me after like three days whatever and I was expecting this car going to be so rough condition and I have to spend a lot of money on it and I'm not going to enjoy it. Probably I'm going to drive it a little bit or not going to drive it, just drop it at the auction or sell it, whatever. But when I first see the tires on this car, this car was super dirty and uh, I do see that it's a Michelin Pilot and it's brand new tires. So the people who doesn't care about car, they're not going to put those kind of tires on this car because it's so much expensive. You can see that online and uh, I'm pretty sure it is expensive tires. So I'm like, okay, probably it's not a bad car at all. So when I started up, the battery is not dead and the car was sitting for a while at action, but it started up, no check engine light, no, no coats, nothing. So I started driving a little bit and I can feel right away there is a, a motor mount broken. I already got it actually. I don't tell you the price how much I pay for it. So, and I drove it a little bit and the car seems to be so nice and so fine. There is nothing wrong with the car besides that motor mount, which is bugging me still. Since we're in California right now, we do have to do the smoke check every year, or not every year, but again, we do have to have the smoke check before we're going to put the car for sale. So without checking the OBD, without checking the codes or permanent codes or something, radio or not, I just went straight to smoke check station and it passed the smoke check, which means there is no codes, all monitors ready, and the car is good to go. So this car was really dirty and I was thinking, okay, there is a lot of scratches, there is a lot of panels I need to pay attention on. But again, when we clean it, wash it, this car is so beautiful and needs nothing besides like small things I'm gonna fix it. And probably I'm gonna keep it for myself. First of all, I do have a lot of kids. Second one, it's a seven seat car, which is super comfortable and I'm gonna show it to you later why. And one more point, it's not unusual color. It's not unusual car, especially you're not gonna see that in LA every day. And the people who already sold this car, they've been shocked. They're like, wow, that's a GLS 63 in the Burgundy, in the red, in cherry, whatever color they call it, but it's not the color the way it's called. Anyway, so design of this car, it's perfect for me because the size of the car, the way you feel inside, the way it drives, it's just amazing for your family. If you can afford it, the gas. I don't care about gas anymore. Even I've drove the Tesla for a while. So I always care about the gas to save some money. But again, this car, it's not the one you're supposed to save money on gas. You're supposed to spend money on gas on this car because it's going to give you so much joy. You're not going to handle it, believe me. It has V8 engine, twin turbo. It has 575, I mean 577 horsepower on it. And that's all I'm going to tell about this car. Not about all wheel drive, this and that, the brake clippers. You can find it online. We're going to talk about 2017 GLS 63, which has 100,000 miles on it and the condition of the car with original paint on it is just insane. So as you can tell from the front of the car, this is not a regular GLS. That's something else because the front end, the bumper of this car, it's a totally itself. I mean, that's the MG and you can tell 
by the front bumper and the lip on it so if you can see so from the front of the car you can see it's not a regular gls that's something else that's you're right that's the img and it's not only package that's the whole design the whole interior and outside of the car that's a full img car even the engine it's kind of the same as the other one so the beautiful part about this car again that's the color and that's the condition of the paint because again you can see some scratches some dots here but i'm not gonna touch any panel i'm not gonna repaint something because it is in same condition there is nothing broken the paint is still good i'm gonna polish a little bit and it's gonna be shiny as a brand new uh none of the panels been repainted before and the car never been in accident that's what i can tell even the windshield on this car it's still original tons of options on this car as a 360 view as a distronic plus i mean distronic plus came on those cars maybe 2000 2005 on the s classes and uh it's not a huge point to say oh i'm so impressed because it has destroying no even toyota corolla right now since 2019 or maybe earlier they do have it but i was surprised why these kind of cars for that kind of money still doesn't have the night vision even the cl 600 2008 had a night vision before i had it a long time ago but this car doesn't have it i'm not sure why it's kind of simple inside it's kind of simple outside but it's going to give you that idea it's a huge car huge size of the car which is super fast and if you can see this car behind you coming so fast just step on the side and let it go it's not going to be me it might going to be someone else but they going so fast even the family inside so i'm just going to show you a little quick what's going on under the hood again i didn't do the detail we didn't wash it under the hood it's still in original condition the way i bought it so what i can see right now here there is some oil leak coming from the hydraulic fluid that's probably for suspension maybe when the car was in tow truck but it's not leaking anymore we're going to check it out as i say there is some maintenance i have to do it there is some motor mines i have to replace those things it's a common problem for the mercedes especially for the old one i'm not sure why 2017 has that problem but again it's there it has it so it's broken i'm going to buy the new one and especially they are so cheap that's just the air duct going to your filters on the left and right side the air coming from here so it's sucking a lot of air it's burning a lot of gas the car is super fast but again i check it under the car there is no active oil leak and the car is still okay transmission is not kicking it's not making any noise it's shifting perfectly and it's really comfortable drive i mean the more comfortable drive i'm going to show it inside about the engine i'm not going to talk about it because it's an engine i i think it's, it was improved because uh first of all it came in 2013 la 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 4.7 twin turbo but again it's twin turbo if one of the turbo stop working you have to drop the whole subframe together transmission to work on an engine kind of same as i used to work on the diesel trucks f250 f350 and if somebody knows 2004 6.0 ford i did rebuild those several times and there is nothing wonder for me since i did that worst engine ever so the size of this car is so huge even the trunk area has a two more seats and ba -ba, it's packed already so it's packed with what there is a, a child seat there is one more there is one more there is some stuff here some camera stuff which is always here and i cannot fold it down right now because i do have a lot of stuff and it's like a house so you can put whatever you if you want to put the kitchen here like put some furniture i mean i think you're going to be comfortable just squeeze it here and there and squeeze your body in and that's it let's cook something inside but on a high speed so power lift gate is still working the interior of this car is pretty much in good condition and uh, you can see the sound system it's super cool the real crown control same as on the old gl there is nothing i uh, wonder about and the seats it's kind of old design it's not designer seats it's just a regular but the color is so nice and the condition especially on the back is really good the front seats the side of it as always it has some paint damage which is easy to fix by taking it to your upholstery shop who can repaint it or fix it do some touch up there is a carbon pieces all around and the front seats they do have some cool options which i'm going to show you inside when i'm going to drive the car uh pretty much it we're going to jump inside start it up and drive it a little bit i'm going to show you how it goes and how i'm feeling myself in and what kind of cool options and cool sound system this car has let's go so as we're sitting inside the car there is some part you might gonna see it somewhere else for example this window switch you can see on the Dutch caravan back in 2008, it's still the same on a $150,000 car. Those switches you can see on the 2016, 
Tesla and somewhere else. So they're using exactly the same steering column and exactly the same switches, which is a transmission selector, left and right turn signal and the Distronic Plus. So you can do the cruise control or you can do Distronic Plus and the car gonna drive uh, on a certain amount of distance from the cars in front of you. So some other parts, like the joystick inside in the middle, the one is controlling the media and the navigation, are, in my opinion, it's uh, useless. It's if for some of the Mercedes owner, it's still useful. Just let me know, comment below, put dislike or like. I mean, in my opinion, it's not. So the navigation on this car back in 2017, it was already a lot of different uh, options to put the different navigation system. But still, I mean, that's 2017 and navigation about the same as a 2011 Mercedes. So the cooler, Coolant heated seats, that's the nice. I mean, not all the Mercedes GLS, they do have it, but the coolest thing, it's a massage. So right now I'm on a relaxing, same as my passenger. Climate control, it's about the same. Those push start buttons, you can take it out. You can use your key or you can use this button. I mean, it's about $5 on eBay. If you do have that option, you can buy it and put it on. Maybe your car has it, maybe it's not. So this car has it and it's cool. So you can keep, keep your key inside the pocket and drive it like a normal Prius, you know? So what else I can tell about this car? Since it's an MG GLS 63, you do have that control of the car right in the middle. So right here, you can put it on the comfort mode, you can put it on sport, sport plus, snow or individual. So in the menu again, you can choose it, you can adjust it, the engine, the way suspension works, the way the transmission reacting on whatever you're trying to do. But I'm gonna drive it on a comfortable mode, which is super good. So when I drive, if I step a little bit harder on the gas, I'm going to feel like my engine jumping. So since the motor mount is broken, so the quality of this car, it's really good. I do love the, the aluminum pieces of the of the steering wheel. I do love this up and down my paddle shifting, which is on the steering wheel. So I can control it if I'm not driving on a comfortable the car just flies. But again, if I step on the gas a little bit harder, my engine start jumping because the motor mount broken. I don't want to broke any other motor mounts or transmission mounts. I'm just going to accelerate a little bit slower and it's gonna be more comfortable for me and for my passengers. Especially if you're driving with the family inside the car, it's better to go on the comfortable mode because the car is gonna react as a comfortable mode car. Uh, auto stop and stop and stop option, I don't like it at all. I'm gonna turn it off later on in the menu. So the climate control, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's like all the Mercedes, still the same, the temperature here, it's repeating on the dashboard, I mean, on the middle screen. The navigation, as I say, it's kind of useless for me, the configuration of the car, you can choose it. But again, there's so many options, you're not going to use them all. You're just going to put it on the comfortable mode or sport mode. Again, if you don't want to do that, if you like kind of lost like me and those all those buttons, just use your paddle shift and you can go down and step up and that's it. The car is going to react at the same time. The, some of the parts of the car is still working. And it's still good, even the car has 100,000 miles on it. So the moonroof, which is panoramic roof on this car, the sun shades still going open and closed, which is really cool. I mean, usually Mercedes, they fall apart. Those plastic pieces on the sun shades, they fall apart and it's getting stuck on it's not, it's chewing it. So it's not opening, not closing it, it's just getting stuck. I don't like it at all, but this car, I do like it because it's still working. So since right now I can drive the car with no sunglasses on me because it has a tinted windshield. Tinted windshield, why? Just because it's supposed to be there so nobody can see who's driving. You can drive it naked, you can drive it in uniform, you can have your gun here or a lot of money, cash. If your car is locked, it's tinted uh, windshield, that's it. Nobody cares about you, it just Mercedes pass by. But as you can see the quality of the dashboard, the leather they put it on, it's the same as a kind of reminding me McLaren. So they do care about how it's going to look like but they do not care how it's going to look like about five years from now. So five years, six three years from now, the leather sucks and you can see it here. There is a bubbling, there is a squeezing. I mean, uh, is it $150,000 car? Yes, it used to be back in 2017, but now it's not. Is it comfortable still? Yeah, it is super comfortable and I can adjust my seat so many ways. So even if you're fat or you're skinny, you're super small or you're super tall, this car will be able to do that and you're going to be able to drive it in comfortable mode. So the cool option on this car, that's a massage seat. So you can massage your body, but not only your body, your body who's sitting next to you. That could be your wife, could be your friend, could be your kids. And there is a four different massage types, which is I like right now because it's not first time driving the car. I'm driving this car about uh, three days from now. And I do like it when I'm going home and just putting on a relax mode and the seat doing that relaxing massage to my body and I'm feeling so nice. I'm, I'm enjoying my ride home, 
not like I used to drive it before. The only thing where I don't like it when I'm driving home, to see my to see my gas gauge going down a little bit. I mean, it's a little bit when you're driving slow, but as soon as I step on the gas, it's going down so fast. But again, you drive an AMG, that's a V8, that's 5.5. V8, twin turbo engine, you're supposed to see that often. So, it is, it's, so it's no wonder for that. I mean, I understand the people who's buying that car for 150K, maybe over, maybe it doesn't matter. Who's buying, who's spending a lot of money for that car, even the leasing it, so they, they do can pay 1500 or 2000 or a little bit less, whatever, they can pay that money. So the only thing they care about, that's the time they're gonna spend at the gas station. Same as a McLaren Kaida when you're buying a new one. And uh, they don't wanna spend the time, and they're just going home with empty tank, that's it. And tomorrow we're gonna see what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go back again, or I'm gonna call someone who's gonna come and gas my car in front of my house. So the Mercedes, I would say, has a huge depreciation on the price over the years. So basically, over the six years, this car dropped so much, not even 50%, it, it dropped more. I got it about, uh, I would say, around 30% of the new price, and the car's only six years old. If you're gonna compare with any Honda or Toyota, or even the Hyundai, they're not dropping in the price so much. But this car, that's why it's so expensive, that's why down payment so expensive, I mean, they didn't get a lot of shortage during that pandemic uh, because the Mercedes, BMW, they were offering new cars left and right, but Toyotas, they've been out of stock and they steal some of them. But Mercedes, as far as I know right now, they do have a lot of options, they're doing discounts and they're just trying to sell it. Not maybe AMG because AMG probably is hard to get, but some of them maybe not. So if you want to compare this car as the size of the car, as a SUV, as a kind of sport SUV, because it's not regular SUV, what do you would prefer to compare? I would say Honda Pilot, no. I mean, don't even touch those, those market. The Bentley Bentayga, not really, because it's not so many space inside and it's not the same car. Audi Q7 with 2.0 engine, not really. So I would say BMW X7, because that kind of year, it wasn't exist yet, but later on it was. So right now, if you want to buy the used one, you can buy used one GLS 63 MG, or you can buy X7, X7M. V8 engine, six cylinder engine, you can choose it, you can buy it. I mean, that's preferable, whatever you want, whatever you buy, I don't care. Uh, if I'm gonna find something in a weird color, like I do see a lot of X7 as a black, white, I did see the blue color, it might gonna be red color one day. I'm not gonna say no to that, I'm gonna buy it if the price is gonna be right, and we're gonna compare it. But for now, I don't see that many cars on the market, even the used one, you can buy it in same condition, with same options, so fast, family CV, seven seats. And again, if you wanna compare this car to the G-Wagon, G-Wagon is not the same car, not at all. It's not that comfortable, it is, it's totally different car, and it's totally different feeling about it. So it's gonna give you a lot of emotions, but again, it's going to give you a lot of emotions as a G-Wagon, not as a family seven-seats car. So as you can tell right now, that's my third day of driving this car. And I was going to resell it, but right now I'm thinking I'm going to keep it. Because why? Uh, probably I'm not going to find the same color and the same price in the same condition car anymore. So that's why I just don't want to take a risk and sell this car. And somebody going to buy it and I'm never going to buy it again. Probably I'm going to keep it. I'm going to put it from my house. And my family gonna enjoy it, my wife gonna drive it, my kids love it already, and uh, I have no reason to sell this car. So as of for now, I'm gonna keep this car and enjoy it because I'm enjoying it every day, and I'm gonna just fix it little things on it and keep it for my family. Let's see if they're gonna like it longer than me, uh, but I don't have any plans to sell it, and probably I'm not gonna find the same car as I say again, because the color is super rare and it's not so many GLS on the market. There is maybe like nationwide, I, I checked them and between 2017, 2018, maybe like 40 cars on the market and they're all black and white, black and white, black and white, black and white. I mean, come on, like do green color or something. So I got the red one, it's super nice and I never see it before. Now I see it every day and I'm so happy. Uh, if you're happy for me, just put the thumbs up and comment below if you're not happy put down so I'm gonna know you're not happy not about me about yourself any comments I would appreciate it so much I'll see you next time with new car and it's gonna be something interesting because for now I'm not gonna do just regular cars as I thought I'm gonna do I might gonna do it but not right now so if something interesting like that I'm gonna film it for sure and explain it to you why I choose this car to sell or to keep